Uh, yes. Hi. I believe that uh, I have come to you at a bit of an inopportune time. Uh, I had promised that I would be giving you some, some personal attention, but um, my schedule got really out of hand today. Uh, in addition, I felt that my immune system had not been getting enough attention, so during that time I uh, decided to get sick. <clears throat> so I, uh, I appear to have double booked you between several meetings while I'm trying to make myself some throat coat, among other things. One moment. I'm not exactly a fan of tea, but this apple cinnamon seems to be doing the trick. If at least for the time being. I'm going to do my best to do this care for you while I'm under the weather, but also while I'm eating my lunch and taking care of a needy drone that's currently pressing his head to my lap. And this is the closest thing to free time that I tend to get when I'm working. <clears throat> you really need to stop purring. It's making it difficult for me to talk to them. You could hear him, didn't you? Drone 2020 seemed to be thinking it would be wise to come up into my lap and give me some attention. They are not, uh... <clears throat> I'm sorry, one moment, please. <clears throat> Goodness me. The drones are very empathic individuals, for lack of a better term. They tend to sense when I'm in need of uh, a little TLC. Problem is, is that oftentimes that TLC requires me giving a little bit more work. Drones are a little high maintenance at the best of times. In the worst of times, they are completely devoid of autonomy, so I have to micromanage. But at the very least, they make some nice noises when they are at their most comfortable. I took a subroutine that I had gotten from certain felines, uh, purring, as it were. Orcas don't typically purr. They, they trill, they chirp, they purf, but they don't purr. But sometimes, something I like about the feline aspect of that is that when they purr, the vibrations promote promote bone density and give you a soothing time to relax. I hope you understand that, yes? Here, I'll show you what I mean. Come here. Okay, I lied. It wasn't a drone. I just, I have a cat in my lap. Say hello, cat. Well, this is what you asked for, so, you know, I wanted to have a little bit of time with the Tristoad here, but you disagreed with that. This is my cat. If it wasn't obvious, she tends to be in close proximity when I attempt to do any kind of work. <clears throat> but now that I am a little sick, I'm going to try and see if I can focus long enough to be able to do this sort of thing with you. At the very least, she has a very nice collar. If you could hear the slight jingle. And over here. You know, recently, my cat had misplaced her collar 
and I had to get a new one. And oftentimes when you end up having to get a new cat collar, the bell just isn't quite right. And so the sound that they make is different, so it feels like you've acquired a completely different cat, a different animal. Come here. Ow, 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 stop. Well then, this is your fault. You put yourself in a situation with this, and now you're being really catty. Are you done? I need some alone time anyway. Are you relaxed yet? <clears throat> I'm going to take this, uh... Apple cinnamon tea and... I'll admit, I prefer milk at the best of times, but this is far from that. come to me wanting to find a positive experience and a good opportunity to relax, I confess my plans were going to take you on a bit of a tour, but since I am a bit inebriated with uh, illness, I can't exactly do that without getting somebody else sick. So here I am, sequestered in my private office. It's not remotely as scientifically advanced, nor is it one that is steeped in various creature comforts. It is utilitarian and little else. Oh, goodness. You know, the worst thing about when you're sick is that feeling when you have to sneeze and it's just tinkling at the very tip of your nose. But in my particular instance, I don't have a stuffed nose, I have a runny one. It's just dripping little droplets. <clears throat> and I'm sure you were thinking, oh look, Darkwood has been decided to grace us with his presence in the few times that he's actually been able to find time for himself. And it happens to be at a point where he is at his least convenient. <laughs> Goodness, I have been inundated with uh, contracts and meetings and measures of people that I'm meaning to facilitate with, but I can get a little bit overburdened at times with those sorts of things, so I had initially uh, planned on booking this uh, during my lunch period. <clears throat> I'm sorry for that. I, I haven't even had the time to go out and, and get um, food. So we're going to take a little journey here, and we're going to wander around within the confines of my private office and see if we can't find any food so I don't have to order out and reveal the location of my warehouse because of DoorDash. I remember one of my subordinates had thought that that was a good idea and did not quite understand when his uh, grilled BLT didn't show up. And instead, at his door, was a very disappointed-looking yours truly having to educate him about the finer qualities of discrepancy. God. My... My cognition is so out of sorts, I'm probably using the wrong words in a lot of these. I have a... A horrible habit of scrambling my aphorisms. I remember a time 
I was offered an opportunity to take part in a competition. And the Master of Ceremony says, please present your information as needed. And I thought, oh goodness, I thought it would be prudent to step in. And I leaned in and said, I will put my hat in the pot. as if I had two completely different sayings stuck in my head. Now then, let's see if we can't find something. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, it appears here I have, I have found a pressure cup. Well, this is not food, but the bigger question is, why is this here? Perhaps I was planning on checking someone up, medically speaking. If you're wondering if I have any medical experience, I would regret to inform you that I do not. That doesn't mean I don't have a couple of doctors in my vicinity concerned about the high blood pressure that I possess, because of course I do. Well, this is not useful at all, is it? <clears throat> Let's see, what else do we have down here? Ah! Oh, sweet relief. The air conditioner has started to ventilate wind into this room. The unfortunate thing about this office is that it is very hot because there's low ventilation and... Uh-oh. You remember that thing I told you about with the sneezing? I can feel it right now. I'm going to grab this tissue and... Is it coming? Is it coming? Uh, oh, that's the worst feeling. Oh, I cannot tell you how infuriating it is to desire a sneeze and unable to do so. Now, what else do we have here? Uh, I have found in my collection of things in my office, I found some tonfas. Let's see if I can just gently... made a very nice wood. And there was a time when I was actually training with these. It has a nice feeling to them. When you grip the handle, the weapon seems to be at its most comfortable along the side of your arm. It's good to block, good to swish and swish forward and back. And with a little strike, we can we shouldn't do that while I'm sick. <clears throat> um, my cat is at my feet, staring at me with judgment and bemused catharsis. Oh, is my misery fulfilling you, cat? Ignore her. The time that I have is with you. Now, what else do we have here? Um, oh, we have some deodorizer here. I wonder what would happen if I... Oh, that's not too bad. That was a lot more than I expected. side. <laughs> the smell that has now invaded my sinuses is not uh, dripping sickness, but the wonderful, um, beautiful mists of a Hawaiian luau produced in the 
exotic facility of Cincinnati, Ohio. <clears throat> oh, good. There's no formaldehyde in it. That's comforting. <coughs> I'm going to ask you very nicely to not share around that I have, in my haste to care for you, pepper sprayed myself. <clears throat> now then, let me uh, clear this luau out of the inside of my nostrils. <laughs> I was looking for food, wasn't I? Oh, look at this. sound of what appears to be tiny marbles. This is, in fact, a fortuitous opportunity for me to engage in sustenance in the form of yogurt raisins. Beggars can't be choosers. Now then, what I want you to... Oh, that's unfortunate. The It appears the yogurt has melted, and I am making quite a mess. All right, then. Oh, what I want you to do is try to relax as best as you can. As the dulcet tones of my voice fill you with a central paradise not known without a degree of verisimilitude of a system. <clears throat> okay. Trying to gorge myself while I'm tending to you is ill-advised. Oh. And I dropped all of it. Now, let's see here. I consumed about 15 pieces, and it says here that the... <sighs> ah, 130 calories. I don't exactly think that that's going to be enough for lunch. <clears throat> what else do I have in this room? I do have an energy drink in case of emergencies. However, I have acquired this particular drink when I was on a contract in Las Vegas and the nature of the drink had me perplexed because it was attempting to gaslight me into thinking that I was in a coma. Let me read the description of this drink. <clears throat> this is not real. You are asleep. This existence is a dream. You are not looking at a can in a store. Snap out of it. You are asleep and this is a dream. Please, wake up. You are not who you are in this dream. Your family is concerned. They are standing around your bed, begging you to wake up. Please wake up. Do you feel that? Here's a damp cloth. Of course, my wrist communicator is telling me that I have all sorts of things that I need to handle, but I'm silencing that because I care about you. I'm focused on your well-being and little else at the moment. <clears throat> okay. Let me continue reading off of this can. Now we're gently shaking your shoulder. Feel the shake. Feel yourself coming back to us, please. All we have are our words. What more can we do? <sighs> now, I was curious about this at first, and I was amused, because I took a long thought about that and said to myself, well, I have no biological family right now, so this is obviously not a simulation. 
It could be a simulation for you, or it could be a Tristo-themed energy drink trying to get me to wake up. Now, what would happen if I had taken a sip of this can? Honestly, the novelty of it is much more amusing than whatever taste is going to be underneath it. Besides, I don't think I really need more taurine or gluco... glucuron olactone in my life. What about you? Would you care for some pyridoxine hydrochloride? It's vitamin B6, don't be so scared. You could probably describe any scientific term and it will feel like an unpleasant chemical. It was the joke that they had said a long time ago. Dihydrogen monoxide is going to kill you. I feel compelled to point out that that's water, but <clears throat> I don't know where you're from. Tristodes have a tendency to be faceless, bodiless, voiceless, so I can't really infer where you're originating from. All I can infer is you like spending time with me, and that's appreciated, but oh, I can't exactly say that I often have time for myself. It can be frustrating. Oftentimes you find yourself running around trying to make sure that everything's happening, that you don't really take a moment to stop and smell the roses, or at least in this case, enjoy some tea. I would very much like to partake in some milk right now, but milk produces phlegm, which is something I really don't want in my life right now. Luckily, I have a very strong immune system. Usually when these sorts of things happen, I tend to power through with a lighter-than-usual day, and then I get over it after a day or two. <clears throat> oh, goodness. I have this distinct feeling that I have been putting my nose to the grinder for so long that I have not given myself the opportunity to observe my surroundings in this office. There are cables on the floor that I'm confident if I stood up and walked around I'd probably trip over them. There are books that I need to uh, peruse and examine more carefully. Yes, I do read. Not as often as I would care to admit. Not like the bookshop skunk or his posse of brightly colored mascots, but I do read. I think the last book that I got a chance to enjoy was a horror novel, <clears throat> specifically Uzumaki by Junji Ito. Yes, I seem to be a little bit on the nose, don't I? The hypnosis-themed mysterious canine is into spirals. Now, this is different. There's something I really enjoy about Lovecraftian and Eldritch Macabre. Something where the things that are happening to people are beyond our understanding, but there is a pattern, a system that is in place that... We understand what's happening, but we don't understand the relevance as to why. In Uzumaki, it's about a town that is inundated with these spiral patterns that um, cause people to gradually go insane. There are storms made of tornadoes that are spirals in and of themselves people who are turning into snails and slugs because they've got a spiral pattern on their uh, shell. And eventually they start building the town to look like one giant spiral, consisting of one single long building looping endlessly around itself. I find it compelling, 
But what I love the most about him is not that he is a strange individual or that he is particularly wounded or torn or troubled. In fact, he's quite the opposite. He once made a story about people who get chased by giant balloons that look like their heads with a noose at the bottom. And if you try destroying the giant balloons, your head pops because it's your head or something. And a lot of people questioned him, why would you write a story like this? What, what was going through your mind? And he was just sitting there and very patiently said, you know, I was, I was looking at a balloon one day and said, what if balloon, but it was scary. <laughs> it was refreshing. It's why I find the triangle so compelling. It reminds me of the times that I enjoyed with uh, the Twilight Zone when I was a young boy, where Rod Serling would come forward and simply say, what if this strange thing happened? There's no moral, there's no deeper meaning behind it. What if it, what if just something strange happened? Deal with it. Your face has now been replaced by a pig's. What do you do? People came down from a spaceship and now they're disappearing one by one. What do you do? I have a uh, acquaintance who frequently presents me with these bizarre apocalyptic scenarios and simply infers to me, posits the question, what would you do? What would you do if a galactic-sized entity slapped the Earth and atomized everything in it? What would you do? And my response is always the same, if not a little bit glib. Die, I guess. <laughs> what would you do? <sighs> now then. But I've gone off on a tangent, haven't I? I really must apologize for the informalness of my behavior. Oh look, I found a bag. There appears to be some potato chips in them. Now this is troubling because I can't remember the last time I enjoyed potato chips. Well, when in Rome. Hmm. Ah. Alas. They were very stale. That tracks. <laughs> well then. Let's see if I can do a little bit something to salvage this little situation that we find ourselves in. Shall we? going to attempt something. It's a bit of a running theory, but I have a feeling that this won't bother you considering that you're a Tristode and that you've got nothing to worry about. Of course, if I happen to be wrong and I have decided to ail you with uh, the head cold that I have, I don't know if a Tristode would be more susceptible, perhaps we'll have a War of the Worlds situation where you'll finally be out of my hair because of a small little virus dancing around in the back of my sinuses. But you can't resist the opportunity of a pleasant hug, could you? No. No, I don't think you could. Now, of course, this is an answer that's being filled into my head for me. You're not actually responding, but I'm making an assumption for both of us. So, let's see. Don't get used to this. There we go. There. Can't remember the last time I enjoyed a hug. I'm so focused on professionalism and clinical detachment that I don't really 
give myself this kind of time. It's not so bad, though. Just holding you close, making you feel perhaps a little warm, perhaps a little comfortable. I don't know if you can actually see, but I'm doing something for your benefit. <laughs> okay, I'll admit. It's not something that I'd thought ahead of time. Being sick tends to make me forget some very basic things in terms of protocol. For example, I have forgotten to turn on my hologram the entire time that I've been talking to you. Don't tell anyone, please. Right. I want to make this abundantly clear. <clears throat> The primary reason that I'm doing this with you is, dear Tristode, is because I have a running theory that when I am less in control, the desire to acquiesce to your needs grows. Therefore, if I get tired, or hungry, or perhaps emotionally compromised, I feel a compulsion to do more for you. Perhaps it's guilt. Perhaps it's a parasocial fascination that ails me. What the hell am I talking about? I have a head cold and that's about it. I have a head cold and I overbooked myself. That's all it is. That being said, I um, I'll need to make up for this in spades. Happy April Fool's Day. 